Kathy Blake is out for a stroll in the park by herself. What's so striking is that Kathy is completely blind and has been for over 30 years now. Life was great the year right before I was diagnosed. I had just started a new job. I had just bought my first new car and I had just uh, started dating my now husband. Life was good. And then? Then, a diagnosis from her doctor, retinitis pigmentosa, or RP. It's a genetic disease that leads to visual loss and is not curable. The light-receiving cells in the retina slowly start to die, leaving the patient at least partially blind. The doctor had told me, you know, there's some good news and bad news. The, you know, the bad news is you're going to lose your vision. The good news is we don't think you'll go totally blind. Um, unfortunately, I did lose all my vision uh, within about 15 years. I'm one of the retinitis pigmentosa patients that, that actually it all went. But two years ago, Kathy got a glimmer of hope. She heard about an artificial retina being developed with help from the National Science Foundation at the Doheny Eye Institute in Los Angeles. A good candidate for the artificial retina device is a person who's blind because of retinal blindness. They've lost the rods and cones, the light sensing of their sensing cells of their eye, but the rest of the circuitry is relatively intact. And Kathy was the perfect candidate. In the simplest rendition, this device basically takes a blind person and hooks them up to a camera. It may sound like the stuff of science fiction, and just a few years ago it was. A camera is built into a pair of glasses similar to this image, sending radio signals to a tiny chip in the back of the retina. The chip, small enough to fit on a fingertip, is implanted surgically and stimulates nerves that lead to the vision center of the brain. Kathy is one of 20 patients who have undergone surgery and used this device. Kathy. It's been about two years since the surgery and Kathy comes for weekly testing at the University of Southern California's medical campus. Okay. So Kathy, we're just going to play with this. That little hole in the center of the glasses is the camera. Kathy scans back and forth until she senses the objects on the screen and then touches them. The low-resolution image from the camera is still enough to make out the black stripes on this board. These are the impulses being sent from the camera to the 60 receptors that are on the chip in her retina. So what is Kathy seeing? I see flashes of light that indicate a contrast from, from light to dark. The flashes are now starting to make a little more sense to me where um, if there is a line that I'm actually kind of seeing the flash in a line instead of just a flash on and off. If you've been blind for 30 or 50 years, all of a sudden you get this device, there's a period of learning. Your brain needs to learn. And it's literally like seeing a child, a baby crawl, to a child walk, to an adult run. I, I'm always thinking, gee, what, what is that? Oh, there's something. I'm trying to figure out what, what things are. Um, I don't know. Okay. Most of the time I have to be told what it is, but I know that something is there. Kathy takes the device home. The software that runs the device can be upgraded. So as the software is upgraded, her vision improves. Recently, she was outside with her husband and saw something she hadn't seen for a long time. And as I scanned up in the sky, I got a big flash right where the moon was and pointed it out and said, there's a big flash right there. And he said, that's it. That was pretty amazing to me because I can't even remember how many years ago it's been that I would ever be able to do that. This technology has a bright future. The current chip has a resolution of 60 pixels. Dr. Humayun says that number could be increased to over 1,000 in the next version. But I think uh, it, it will be just extremely exciting that if they can recognize their loved one's faces and be able to see what their wife or husband or their grandchildren look like, which they haven't seen. My d eye disease is hereditary. My three daughters happen to be fine, but I want to know that if my grandchildren should ever have a problem that somewhere you know, down the line they will have something to give them some vision. And Kathy is taking the first small steps to make that vision a reality. For Science Nation, I'm Bruce Burkhardt.